All right, Shalawam Yasharala, Shalawam Yasharala. First and foremost, Kohalayim La, Albanawa, Yahawah, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rechachradash. Double honors to our elders and elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Akim out there on the highways and the byways. Salutations to the hopeful elect. Salutations to you speckled birds, you Israelite foreigners, and a strong shalom to the aqua sitting and listening in silence as the scriptures say to do so. Okay, this is your brother, Amoth Ya'ais from Yahawada. Amoth Ya'ais from Yahawada. Coming at y'all with another beautiful lesson. And we're going to do a part three to who is Esau Edom, man. Yes, you heard me. Who is Esau Edom? Part three. All right, so we're going to go in this book right here. We're going to go in this book right here. Who is Esau Edom? Okay, and we're going to read. Uh, today we're going to read. <clears throat> Salakia. Let me get to it. You're going to read Edom's motive to kill Israel. Edom's motive to kill Israel. But before we do that, let's start out with a scripture. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 25. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 25 verse 7 and it reads this. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations, man. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is taking that that covering that the um that these Edomites have put over all nations. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the names they, that they've given all these nations, all the deceitful lies and everything that they've done, everything is being revealed, man. So let's go ahead and get into this book, and then we're gonna we're gonna pull out some scriptures while we read it. All right, so this is uh, this is uh, Esau's motive to kill Israel. Esau's motive to kill Israel. Just as with any villain, villain or murderer in a play or story, there is a motive or reason why Esau Edom has been trying to kill Jacob, Israel, all these years. When we look at the scenes and events in the script, we will find some underlying motives why the Edomite Jews want to kill and destroy the Christian Israel people. Okay? So, it, uh, basically, we, we, we know the truth, man. The Hebrew Israelites, man. And the only true Christians are uh, Israelites, man. All right, let's keep on going. Since Esau had lost his birthright and blessing to Jacob, which gave Jacob dominion and prosperity in the world, Esau has had a perpetual desire to take revenge against Jacob. Esau wants the dominion and the blessing back. Esau wants the dominion and the blessings back and his envy and anger for Jacob possessing them in his stead motivated Esau to destroy Jacob. Now Edom must destroy and kill Israel for it is the only way to get the revenge for Esau. All right, so let's go ahead and pull out some, because like I said, man, he, ha he has a perpetual hatred. So let's go ahead and uh, pull out some scriptures on that, on this perpetual hatred. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 35, straight to the point. Verse 5. Because thou hast shed, because, it's like it, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity and the time that their iniquity had an end. Okay, so they, they 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 had a perpetual hatred for the Israelites, man. Let's get another one, man. Let's go to Amos chapter 1, verse 11. Amos chapter 1, verse 11. Thus saith Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, for three transgressions of Edom, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword, and did cast off all pity, and his anger did prepare, and it's like it, and his anger did tear perpetually, and he kept his wrath forever. Okay, he had that perpetual hatred, man. He never, he never let go of it, man. He passed it down to his kids. Okay. Let's keep on going. Let's uh. Matter of fact, 
Because it was already destined for uh, for Esau not to get this blessing. Let me go. Because even um, even our, our, our mother, our foremother, Rebecca, knew, man. Rebecca knew that um, the blessing had to come to uh, Jacob. This is Genesis chapter 25, starting off in verse 22. I'm going to get to the point where she knows that the, black, the blessing was going to come to Jacob. And the, tri and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahawashai, and Yahweh, Bahashim Yahawashai, said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. So she knew that that blessing had to go to Jacob. She already knew because the Most High told her. Okay? But let's keep on reading. All right, it says, Jacob, Israel's birthright and blessing included a status of dominion in the, in the earth with the Most High as their head. This dominion, conflicts, this dominion conflicts with the Edomite Jews' plan of one world dominion. Okay, what's that one world dominion? Because they've been trying to do that since the back in the day. So let's go to uh, 1 Maccabees. Let's get some scriptures on that. They've been trying to do that since back in the day, but now they got a new, a new thing they're trying to do. Uh, this is 1 Maccabees chapter 1, verse 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. And everyone said, so like it, and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathens agreed according to the king's Slakia. So verse 42 again. And everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yea, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed on the idols and profaned the Sabbath, man. Okay? So he wants to have that one world government. So what is he, what is he trying to do right now? This is how he's trying to do it now. You should know where I'm going. This is what, he, this is what he's doing now. All right, this is Revelation. Chapter 13, straight to the point. Verse 16. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him have understanding. Salakia. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 600, three score and six, man. So it's that mark of the beast, man. Okay? He's trying to, he's trying to make a, 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 a carnal blessing by having everybody be chipped. Okay? To have, to have everybody uh, 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 fall in line under his orders, man. Okay? Let's keep on going. If Esau cannot have dominion according to the Most High's plan, he will have it according to his plan. And we just read his plan. His plan is to have everybody uh, have that chip. And the forerunner before that chip is that love potion. You know what I'm saying? That You know what I'm talking about? That love potion. Okay, that's the forerunner to the mark of the beast, which is the RFID microchip. Okay? If Esau cannot have dominion according to the Most High's plan, he will have it according to his plan. The two dominions cannot coexist. If all Israel, if all Israelites can be killed, then the Most High's plan for Israel to have dominion in the earth under him cannot be fulfilled. But what did the Most High say? Let's go to Isaiah real quick. What did the Most High say? Because we can get numerous scriptures on that. But we're just going to pull out one. We're just going to pull out one, Israel. Because that's all we need is one. All right, this is Isaiah 59. Verse 20, and it reads this. So shall, so shall they fear the name of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, and the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, shall lift up a standard against him. Okay, so Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to protect the Israelites, man. And furthermore, his remnant is chosen, man. Because uh, two-thirds of Israel is going to be punished for what they, you know, for their iniquities, man. Okay, because you have to be predestined to be part of that one-third remnant that comes back. Okay, let's keep on reading on. Uh, if Esau could kill Jacob as he originally planned, okay, because he originally planned it. So let's go and get the scripture on that. Let's go to Genesis 27. 
And like I said, he kept that perpetual hatred and just passed it on down to his children, man. All right, this is Genesis 27, straight to the point, verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. So he kept that in his, in his heart, man. He passed that on down to his kids, man. All right? If Esau, could, if Esau could have killed Jacob as he originally planned, then as the original, just like it, then, then as the only surviving heir, Esau would have regained the birthright. If Esau would have died when he should have the birthright, the birthright would have, would have fallen onto Jacob as the next oldest or only surviving son of Isaac. Because of this law of inheritance, the Edomites in the world today believe that if they can kill off every Israelite, this is their plan. This is what they're trying to do right now, Israel. Let's read this again, man. Because of this law, because of this law of inheritance, the Edomites in the world today believe that if they can kill off every Israelite, they can regain the birthright and its and its blessings as the only surviving heir. That's what they're doing right now, man. They're trying to kill all Israel off so they can regain this blessing. All right, and then right here it goes off because it says the Edomites who are composed of Esau mixed with Canaanite people. That's We already know Numbers 1 and 18. I'm not going to read it. Numbers 1 and 18. You, there's no such thing as, as mixing races, man. You are what your father is. If your father's from the tribe of Judah, you're a Judite. If your father's from the tribe of Ephraim, you're, you're Ephraimite. Okay? If your father's from the tribe of Gad, you're Gad. Point blank period, man. All right, so let's drop down here. Esau Edom may have other motives to kill off the Most High's people Israel, but none are truly well founded on the law. You hear that? <laughs> Esau Edom may have other motives to kill off the Most High's people, but none are truly well founded on the law. So what does that mean? Let's go to Psalms. Let's see what that means. Let's go to Psalms. I'm going to get that right now. Let's see what that means. Well founded on the law. All right, this is Psalms 147, starting off at verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his commandments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, even the devil knows that. Nobody has the understanding of the scriptures but the Israelites, man. Even the devil knows that, man. But he's going to go off. I'm going to read it more. He's going to go off. All right, uh, all right. Jacob lawfully possessed the birthright, and Edom as a mongrel can no longer possess it. As, as with most motives for killing, the motives of Esau for killing Jacob are based on passion and revenge, not on any lawful right to action. Okay. Therefore, thus is a plan of conspiracy to kill all the white Christians peoples from the planet. That's where they went off. So let's get a scripture to uh, basically give you the description of the head tribe. Because all, all the tribes have melanin in their body, man. Or started off with melanin. But we, you know, in captivity, so we're going to look like everybody else. But let's get a scripture to, to, sh to show what the true Israelites look like. All right, this is Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish, they are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem gone up. Let's get another one, just, just for edification's sake. Let's go to Lamentations chapter 4, verse 8. Their visage, their appearance, their visage is blacker than a coal. They are not known in the streets, their skin cleave up to their bones it is withered it has become like like a stick so the so the real jews the real hebrew israelites started off as mullinated people but us being in captivity we spread around all four corners of the earth we've had sex with heathen, a heathen women so you're going to have israelites that look like other nations all right so that what that, that white christian uh bullshit is, is 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 uh is a lie esau's motives for killing jacob are all are all part of a plot in the Most High script, and that's true, because he, because the Most High wants to purge out two thirds of his people. Okay, Esau's motives for killing Jacob are all part of a plot in the Most High script. 
this is why we often see aggressive aggressive and hurt and hurtful actions being staged against the white race the per, the process the possessors of the birthright that's that's a lie we are we already read it with the with the real two uh color the uh the hebrew Israelites is okay um Man, that's pretty much it, man. That's it. We made the point, man. We made the point, man. So, man, Lord willing, this is edifying, man. You know, how about shimmy out shadows revealing these monkeys for who they are? You know, so that's that's it, man. The so-called Hebrew Israelites is the so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native and Seminole Indians, man. It's not the so-called Edomites. Them Edomites con converted to our to our nationality, then they they stole our nationality. Point blank, period, man. So, Lord willing, this was edifying. I pray this was edifying. So, with that, I'm just going to say, Koholayim La. Abanawa Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rakak Radash Wa Ababa Bob. Shalom. So called white male. Um, I'm really pink. I go from pink to red, uh, depending on the situation. Uh, when I'm angry, embarrassed, or sunburned, um, red like a devil. Uh, but normally I'm pink, um, pink and dirty like a pig, um, hairy like a dog. Uh, I am an Edomite. I am descended from Esau. Um, I'm a Gentile, a heathen. Uh, I am here to confess that uh, we have inherited lies. Uh, we've been lied to. Um, our fathers have lied to us. They themselves were lied to. Um, the truth is that uh, so-called black people are God's real chosen people. They are the real Jews of the Bible. They are the Hebrew Israelites. They are God's chosen people uh, over and above all other nations on earth. Um, we, uh, like I said, we've been lied to. Uh, Jesus is not white. There's no such thing as white Jesus. I deny that. Uh, that's a lie. Um, it's a construct of white supremacy. Uh, Jesus, the Messiah, is a black man. Uh, Mary was black. Um, pretty much everyone in the Bible was so-called black. Uh, the Bible is a history of black people. It was written by black people, about black people, for black people. Uh, that's why we as Edomites have uh, such a difficult time understanding it is because it's not for us. Um, so we need to rely upon Israelites to teach us the Bible and help us understand it and know the truth. Uh, so again, um, black, so-called black people um, who were impacted, um, you know, who are descended from people who were impacted by the transatlantic slave trade are God's real chosen people. It says that in Deuteronomy 28. Um, uh, black people are Israelites, white people are Edomites. We've been lied to. Jesus is black. And uh, we are here to serve God's people who are the black people. And that's what we need to start doing. Uh, thank you.